Jasmine, yeah, so we're going to be doing our cervical spine testing today, assessment. We're going to start with active range of motion. So you're going to be just doing this stuff yourself. I'm going to tell you what one, each one to do, and we're going to be trying to stay in consistent with the rest of the examination, which will follow up with passive and then resistant range of motion. Sounds good? So at this point, we have six uh, ranges for the cervical spine on the cardinal planes. So I would like you to start with the flexion. At first, down, excellent. And then look up, please. And that's the extension. Beautiful. Reset. And if it hurts at any point, just please let me know. Okay? Now I would like you to bring your ear to your shoulder. Okay? Perfect. At this point, as a therapist, I'm also looking for the opposite shoulder. If it's rising, that should tell me whether it's actually restricted or not. Because that shouldn't be lifting up. And then go for the other one, please. Excellent. Okay? You can reset. There's also the trunk lateral flexion. C-spine has to be doing it. It's independent uh, rotational component as well. So I would like you to look to your left, please. Shoulder check. Wonderful. That's lateral rotation. And then look to your right. Wait. And then you can reset. Any pain? No. That's it? Okay, wonderful. So that concludes the cervical spine active range of motion testing. We'll be doing our cervical spine examination, passive range of motion testing this time. After the active range of motion, now I will be doing the same motions for uh, Jasmine, hopefully keeping up with the same uh, logical progression. So at this point, I would like you to relax as much as possible, limit the weight of your head. I will be moving it around. Nothing extreme. I'm going to see how far it does, it does go without you actually moving it, okay? So make sure that you're supporting the head as much as possible. And then we're going to go flexion. And then I'm giving it a little bit of an end feel at this point. So my hand is also on the occiput and on the lower neck. Okay. Now Jasmine, please slide towards me at the edge of the table. I will be holding your head the whole time. Okay. And in this particular point, please keep your eyes open. I'm checking for extension. Okay. And then you can slide back. There's no end field for extension because it's dangerous. You just see how far it goes. Once you get on the normal range of motion, then you should be fine. It's just 60 degrees. Okay, now I'm gonna test for the lateral flexion. Left. And then right. Any pain? No. Yeah. Okay. Then we're gonna rotate it to the left. To the right. Couple things. My hand is around her ear, but I'm not completely covering her ear because I'm still trying to communicate with her. And it's a comfortable rotation, not too much aggressive motions here. And because her trust is important because I'm trying to do passive range of motion testing. So the smoother, more confident you are, the better your results will be. And the more you do it back and forth, back and forth, the less um, accurate it's going to get because client is going to start guarding. Okay? So the sooner you complete the test, the better. And that will conclude the passive range of motion testing. Okay. All right. So we're going to be concluding our range of motion testing with the recent range of motion uh, for the cervical spine. So at this point, Jasmine, I'm going to be pushing from different directions, trying to test the integrity of the muscles for the joint itself. Um, please, the key point is, I would like you to match my pressure, so don't let me move you. I'm going to push you in different directions. Try not to beat that point, like point my power. And I'm going to direct you anyway, and I'm going to be counting from five to one. So once we reach zero, we both stop, and that's the end of the test. Uh, the key for this range of motion testing is to keep the joint in the resting position. So when it comes to C-spine, this is basically the resting position it's between flexion and extension. So you don't really need to do much of a uh, modification for the joint itself. So basically I will lift the head up for the flexion purposes. Try to keep your head right here. I'm going to be pushing from here. Don't let me move you. Five, four, three, two, one. Excellent, you can relax. Now I'm going to push up and test extension. 
five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Excellent. Now, this is where usually people start to get a little bit confused because for the passive, we went for lateral flexion. So I need you to push towards her to the two, no, push her to the right because she will resist to do left lateral flexion. So if I stop pushing, all of a sudden she will go this way. In that perspective, I'm testing for lateral flexion for the left side. So and then we're pushing do this way, hold, five, hold, five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. Now in the opposite direction, five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. Now we tested for the left passive rotation. Again, I'm going to check for left, which means I'm going to push her to the right rotation. In that perspective, the hand placement is important because for the lateral flexion, my hand placement is mostly coming from the posterior ear. So behind the ear, I'm pushing. For rotation, you come a little bit interior, a little bit front of the ear, so the head rotates. You can relax for a second. So if I push from here, she will rotate. But if you push from behind, she will go more on the lateral flexion. So when your hand placement is Correct. You can ask your client, ask your client to say, okay, hold, five, four, three, two, one. Check for left rotation. And now I'm gonna push from the other side. Don't let me move you. Five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. And that will conclude our cervical spine raise range of motion. One thing I would like to add is a couple of things we see. Um, make sure that you're not covering the client's face when you're doing this testing. Uh, one thing I noticed over the years is that when I ask for the cervical flexion, as you notice, I'm using the forehead. I'm not using her entire face to push down. Now, you might smile when you see this, but we've seen this many times. Please make sure the client can breathe during this test. Same idea with the rotation. I'm using just a slight interior portion of the ear on the cheek, not the entire face covered, trying to turn the client. Same with this one. So you make sure you're gentle. And my other hand is always supporting the neck. And if I can palpate, there will be a great opportunity for me to palpate because it is, after all, checking for the muscles. So that will be something to add on for future reference. All right, that should conclude the entire C-spine range of motion testing. Active, passive, and resistant in that order, please. Thank you.